Hello teachers, this is my attempt to block out all the noises in my home, including baby sounds, dog sounds, and everything between with this giant headset. I'm sure that you guys in virtual learning mode know what I'm talking about when you're trying to block out the sounds of your household and trying to attend to what you have to do for your job. Today I want to show you guys how I've been using a website called Mentimeter to help me try to engage my students during virtual learning. What I found is that it's even tougher for me to get students to participate when we're in virtual learning mode because for one, they don't even have to show their cameras. They don't have to show themselves on camera rather. So I don't even know if they're in front of me. Um, when I ask questions, sometimes I just get dead silence. I teach high school, so that's not quite unusual when I ask a certain question for a lesson, but it does make it tougher to fully engage students in a discussion or anything having to do with our class. So I've been using a website called Mentimeter to assist me. Um, here is an example of a Mentimeter slide. Um, this was an icebreaker that I did with my students. I asked them, what are three things I can do to assist you during virtual learning? And they input their responses in a word cloud format. So I found that to be really, really useful in getting feedback and it allowed them to make some kind of visual representation of what they would like to see from me. And I'll show you guys some more examples momentarily. This one you can see here is an example that I did after reviewing some content with my classes. I asked them to identify a design principle that they found most interesting. Now, if I did this while we were live in um, uh, live conferencing, I would get total silence. Nobody would necessarily offer a response, but using Mentimeter, they had the option to go to menti.com, use the code that they see at the top of the screen, and input their responses to whatever question I was asking them. This particular slide was set to um, open response so they could make the response as short or as lengthy as they wanted and if they include their names I am able to specifically call on them and say well I see you responded with blah 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 and continue the conversation. The cool thing about these menti slides is that I can reuse them as often as I want. If I want to reuse the same exact slide with another class period, I'm fully able to do so. And I'm going to show you momentarily how I do that. But I want to show you guys just one last example of how I use Mentimeter. Okay, in this last example that I want to show you, I used Mentimeter so that I could get a sense of how many students were continuing on with their classes online or which students were coming back on campus in October when our district has decided we should come back. Um, so I created this slide with a chart. All they have to do is use the code and input their responses and right away Mentimeter gives me immediate data that I can use to kind of figure out how many students I can expect to be back in my classroom or which students I can continue teaching from home and which students still need to decide. So this is not necessarily something that impacts them as much as it impacts me because it will allow me to plan ahead for my classes and make the best des decisions moving forward with how to teach my classes if half of them are going to continue being online. So I'm going to show you guys real quick how to create a basic Mentimeter slide and the different types that are available and how to show it to your classes. The first thing you have to do is create a free account with Mentimeter.com. There is an upgraded account, but I do not use it because I am a broke high school student teacher and I want to be able to just create very basic presentations that I can use as icebreakers with my students or to get immediate feedback. Now, I have several presentations already created as you can see and the great thing about them is that I can reuse them as often as I want to and I'll show you momentarily how to do that. But first I'm going to show you how to create a new presentation. So you click plus new presentation and you're just gonna give it some kind of name. So I'm gonna call this one demo. 
and I can always change the name later on to something more specific. Then it's going to ask me to select a type of slide. So one of the more popular ones um, that I do, at least with my classes, is a word cloud where I will ask them to describe some kind of content in three words. So maybe um, I would ask them, how would you describe color in three words or something like that? And then they're able to put in their entries by going to menti.com on their phone and putting in the code. All of your slides are going to have an individual code and you pretty much have to show your slide to your students in order for them to see it. So I use the word cloud quite often. I often use open-ended as well when I want them to write a little more about a given topic. So this goes back to when I was asking them what is the most interesting um, uh, design principle or I might ask them why are you choosing to stay on campus whatever questions I want to ask them um, given or uh, related to my classes I'm sorry and then I also use scales this is the one that I used when I was trying to figure out how many of my students I can expect to return to the classroom or to continue online learning so I'm going to show you guys briefly how to do the word cloud so for the word cloud, I might ask them something like, um, which three words describe, sorry for my spelling, e-learning to you. And that's all I have to do for now. If I want them to only put in one entry, I can definitely reduce the amount of entries or words they are allowed to put in. For right now, I'm gonna leave it at three, which is the default. I can also add more if I want them to list um, more entries or whatever the case might be. So before I show it to my students, I wanna go and select a nice presentable theme. So I'm going to go right here where it says themes. And there are going to be several different templates for me to choose from. The one that has the little star, the little green star are paid themes. So I am not going to select those because I don't have a paid account. I have a free account. But you guys will see that there's a lot of different options for just your simple Free account. I like this theme because it has a nice background and the presentation information is listed in um, pretty colors. So that's what it looks like when I went ahead and selected that theme. Now here's how I present it to my students every class period. I click where it says present And when I click present, they will just see this screen when I go and show them the screen in my live conferencing app, which I'm using Microsoft Teams. And they know that every beginning of class period, they have some kind of poll, some kind of open-ended questions, some kind of word club that I want them to participate in, whatever the case may be. So on their phones, they can go to menti.com and they can use this code to just go and add a response. So I am actually gonna show you how it works. I'm gonna use my phone and go to menti.com on my phone and put in the code. All right, so I just went to menti.com on my phone. I put in the code and these are the three words that I contributed to this slide. Now, as students are adding more words, you'll see that they start, um, they start populating into the word cloud. Right now, there's only one person who's contributed, that's me. So you're only gonna put in the three words that I put in. Now, um, there is no limit, as far as I know, to how many contributions a student can make to the word cloud, and it gets updated automatically. My classes are about with 40 students in general, so there haven't been any problems with the word cloud not populating all the responses or anything like that. 
If you guys wanted to use this Mentimeter in Canvas for an assignment, like let's say you wanted them to respond to some kind of prompt with the open ended question type, I'm going to show you how to do that. So for this exact same Mentimeter slide, if I wanted to include this in Canvas, I would go to share. And there's a few ways that I would be able to share it. I could either go and copy the link and provide it as a URL link on my Canvas module, or I could go to presentation sharing and copy the embed code and put that same embed code into a Canvas page or a Canvas assignment or a resource page, whatever the case might be. If you don't know how to do that, I do have a suggested tutorial that I'm gonna link in the description box below that shows you how you can embed all kinds of presentations and videos and other things into your Canvas assignments. Now, let's say I want to go and reuse this same exact, let's just wait for it to, okay, finally loaded. Let's say I wanted to go and use this exact same slide for maybe a teacher workshop with my department or anything like that that I might want to do. I don't wanna go and duplicate this slide. I don't wanna have to go and create it from scratch. So instead, when I click on the slide, I'll just go and select reset results and it'll let me reset the slide to blank all over again so I can keep recycling the same slides as often as I wanna do for all my classes. So if I use this exact same slide in my first period and it got populated entirely with a word cloud and then I wanna reuse it with my second period, no problem, I can just select reset slide and um, show it to my students again. They can vote, they can input their answers and I can keep using this exact same slide for each of my seven classes. So I hope this has been helpful to you. I hope that you guys give Mentimeter a try. Let me know if you guys have used their upgraded version, if it's worth investing in, and let me know if you guys have any tips and tricks for using Mentimeter. Um, and I can't wait to see what you guys share. Bye.